Guys, I've got some bad news to share. I've actually stopped calling myself a software developer and it's not because I don't code. My GitHub is it's probably better than yours. The reason is it's just not the same as it used to be. I don't think coding alone is enough and I'm gonna tell you why that's not necessarily a bad thing. The thing I realized is five years into the game, no one actually cares if you're good at coding. And what I mean by that is there's no moment where the founder of Linux sends you an invite and then he knights you to become you know, an elite software developer and join the society. But past a certain point, getting better just at the technical stuff, it doesn't help you that much because you can, you can kind of figure new stuff out on the fly and it more just depends what you need to do and then you learn as needed. You know, the thing I realized too is just coding, it's not even cool. I mean, people don't care. The cool part was never coding. It was building stuff. It was being able to travel and learning how to live abroad and make it fun or making money. Because without those things, it's no encoding is just like Excel. I realized this a while ago. That's why I left Silicon Valley, quit my job. But I still see people myopically over-focused, I think, especially people who watch tech YouTube and they're learning about the 100th framework. And I just think it's a complete waste of time to actually get the things that, that you want, if you're being honest. It's the things I just said, money, the traveling, and the mostly the building stuff. Uh, for me, like that's, that's cool, just hacking and uh, trying to build something useful. All that aside, it used to be a choice, right? You could go deep on the coding, you can make a good career out of it, make 500K, whatever. But nowadays, I think it's a more of a necessity for a couple of reasons. So number one, obviously the market is not what it was. And I'm, I'm talking about the job market. Companies like Twitter have, have set the way they've cut a bunch of their developers and they're fine. And they're actually pushing features faster than ever. So you can blame Elon, but overall there's less job postings. There is actually emphasis put on performance reviews because you can get fired and people are moving companies less because it's harder. The other thing that it's easy to sweep under the rug, but it's the AI stuff. And even if your job is completely sick and secure right now, you gotta think five, 10 years into the future or even 15, but the landscape is gonna massively change because of that. What that means is if you are just over optimizing the coding, then you're kind of screwed. This accelerationist continuous learning mindset is super important to sustain over the long term. Now in the rest of the video, I wanna talk about kind of how to do that and maybe how you can take that technical base that you have or you're building right now and merge it together like the Dragon Ball Z or the or some sort of a science experiment and create kind of interesting combinations that can set you up to do the things you really want better. It can create more, let's say, job security for you by having a unique combination of skills. And I mean, the list goes on. There's a lot of reasons to want to do this. So I'm going to try to keep it super practical and we'll just look at some examples of how to do this and maybe it can inspire you or, or give you ideas for your next move. And by the way, this, I think I said this, but this applies to every level because even as an entry level person, you kind of need to sell, set yourself apart. So maybe start to think about some of this stuff. Okay, so I'll run through it quick, but um, the obvious example is combining coding with ba basic people and management skills. Obvious part being you advance in tech, you hit senior uh, engineer, and maybe you wanna move over to manager for the better pay and it just makes sense. Uh, for you to do that. Obviously, a different set of skills involved there, even if you're a, a senior dev mentoring people. But what you might not have thought about is the fact that you can kind of do this at any point in your career, start mentoring, that'll make you look good, number one, but also outside of the confines of the corporate world because you can kind of partner with someone as a CTO on a startup, even if you're really early in. I know a lot of people personally with companies who have a CTO who is not technical at all. I'm not saying that's good, but having any level of technical knowledge combined with some aptitude for uh, managing people and motivating people and so on, it could, qualify, it could qualify you for that. And if you're thinking, well, when, you just gotta find someone who's at your level too. So someone starting out, like from the beginning with their idea. If you're starting out on the technical side, that's a good partner for you. You might fail, but you, le you learn a lot about everything involved in that. Just something to think about. The next one, interesting one close to my heart, combining tech skills with social media, still extremely powerful, not too late at all. And that could be YouTube, Instagram Reels, Twitter, whatever. I learned myself how to do videos, got pretty good at it. Not saying I'm the best, but I'll even say this, a lot of influencers are not that good at tech, I'm not gonna name names, 
but they still get a big following. In fact, the basic stuff is what gets engagement anyway. So in, in some ways, those people are better to make content and it becomes less relatable when you get too good. So I think content is still great. I'm going a bit slow here, I'll speed up. <laughs> Next one, basic marketing can help you be good at freelancing. And when I say basic, I mean really basic. You just have to be able to put yourself out there in some way. Just being able to connect with a handful of the right people and do basic technical work for them, it's huge. I'll say this too. There's a lot of people out there saying you have no skills or just do copywriting, just sell it and then delivering the service, that's the easy part. Not true. Not true for closing people. Most people have had a bad experience, ad agency or copywriter. They're very skeptical, very hard without a portfolio of work, but bringing something solid and technical to the table and combining it with those, the, those marketing skills and those closing skills, that is huge and still very much a case of the demand is higher than the supply. Now at this point, more clients than you can service yourself or you find you're good at it. So you wanna focus more on that and also maybe doing some sales, sales calls can actually be fun. Agency, the natural li linear scaling path. You start with a few clients, you get the case studies, and then before you know it, you're getting referrals. You've really dialed in that process and you have more people than you can both, you know, give a good level of service and uh, deliver the technical things for them. So at that point, you're gonna to wanna to partner up, you're gonna to wanna to team up with more people, and it's actually you know, pretty awesome. And you're not made this huge jump from zero to ad agency owner. First you got the technical skills, then you got a few clients, and now you have so many clients, you wanna scale it. Very well tread path, and very possible to do. Okay, those are the practical ones. Let's get into some more fun ones that I think are funny, because if you combine coding with traveling, that's an interesting one. So remotely working or freelancing, you can become an overseas baller or passport bro. And I basically did this for years and I'll make a dedicated video on this um, soon, kind of with some humor in there. But you probably know this, but if you have a basic salary or basic freelance income overseas, you're, depending what country you're in, you're pretty rich at that point. So like, if you're just trying to make more money in the US and stay in that box, like you could probably go overseas now and live that lifestyle you're aiming for like today. And that's kind of what I tried to do and I didn't even have income, I just had savings, but this does work. So if you wanna ball out, you also meet interesting people, have a little adventure, depends on your risk tolerance, overseas baller, combining coding with travel. Now let's get into the really funny stuff. So coding plus having low morals. If you're, if you're, if you're good at guessing, ties back to my video on overemployed, meaning you have multiple jobs. You can do this the ethical way, you have your main job, you do a little freelancing and then you combine those two. You get that going while you also have the stable income, but you can also have multiple full-time jobs. Some people are doing this, but yeah, I think there is an ethical way to do it and it is that the expectations are aligned. If it's more of a results only work environment, you can actually get away with that and not ruffle any feathers and it could potentially be fine. Okay, TLDR on this video. There's no finish line on coding and the longer you go, the more diminishing returns you get and it's never too early to diversify with additional skills. Even at the very beginning of your career, getting a job is harder. So you do need some of that even from the beginning now. If you're late in your career, you should be worried about further advancement and also the threat of AI going forward. So don't get too comfortable. The synergy chart thing, it was just a few ideas on what you can start to combine your technical skills with regardless of what level you're at with a few examples. And last but no most importantly, try not to be tweeting about TypeScript or watching videos on the 10th framework because it's kind of a waste of your time. That is pretty much it. Now personal update because I've been away for a while if you care and what to expect next on this channel. Basically I had an ex-girlfriend issue. I lost all my camera gear. Maybe I'll probably won't tell that story, but we're back. We got a new camera. We got kind of a new setup that I'm working on and um, I'm gonna be making some more entertaining, maybe back to more lifestyle videos. Um, topics being all my failed projects over the years. There's a lot of them. <laughs> um, my couple successful projects that made me a couple million, so I'm doing okay. Uh, my years as a passport bro, like what I learned, and maybe like a guide to doing that. Even though it's kind of a, a bad word, I think it's worth trying. So anyway guys, nice catching up and um, I'll see you soon in the next one.